All right, welcome back, guys. Believe it or not, we're actually all ready Ow. to go this time. Oh, hello? Yep, what? Oh, I wasn't sure if that was like, ow, your mic's really loud type of thing. Or, But okay, anyways, we're good to go. This time everyone's here, present, ready to go, in the top, middle, left. I always do it wrong on this map. It's going to be the green Zerg player, Guru. In the bottom right, as the red Protoss, he is Neeb. Neeb. Alright, so Neeb, obviously coming off the Kespa Cup Championship. Uh, pretty big, badass player right now. And certainly a scary dude to get in the bracket. I can't say that I want to give Guru the best odds for this, but it should be noted that this is probably the best chance Guru will have to beat Neeb. Guru's playing home server on Europe. Neeb's playing, I believe, still from Korea. I know he's uh, playing... No. Oh, okay. <clears throat> See, I know he had plans to go home after Kespa Cup. I wasn't sure if he had actually gone yet. So, unless I'm severely misremembering, he went home the day after Kespa Cup. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. I just remember him talking about having plans to go home. So, if that's the case, still, it is Europe versus North America. Not nearly as bad as Europe versus Korea, but still, Guru with the home field advantage, nonetheless. Yep. I remember why I knew that, because Noah Grit uh, tweeted that he was lonely. <laughs> but he has a girlfriend. Well, she doesn't live in the apartment with him. I guess. <laughs> Shout out to Noah Grit! His girlfriend. Anyway. So, Guru did open up with a pool first, by the way, so it was, I think, like, 13 or something like that. So, it'll be deceived, I guess, by the hatchery. It's a, it's a fairly late hatchery, and Neeb shouldn't be deceived either. I mean, he did probe scout after all. So, while Ling's coming across the map, there's really not that many. <coughs> Actually, you know what? he's already prepared the zealot. So, this is kind of interesting. Uh, if you guys recall, when Neeb first stepped into... Oh, nice hiding in that probe, by the way. When Neeb first stepped into the Alima League, he just kind of showed up and won. It was like, cool, great, Neeb's awesome. This is kind of one of his first appearances, I think, in the Corsair Cup. Maybe he played once before type thing, but he definitely doesn't play anything close to often enough for us to recognize him. In this bracket, at least. Guru, however, plays regularly. Guru won last week. He's won a couple weeks in the past, too. Um, there's actually some controversy, if you guys recall. Sweet, sweet drama in the last Corsair Cup. That being said, I am wondering if Neve does have the chops to just kind of sit down, play Protoss really badass, and knock out Guru, who is one of the people who... I gotta give him odds every time it comes to playing him. Like, I don't know what it is. A lot of other players don't like this guy. They don't respect the way he plays, his hockey setup, or anything like that. But this dude, A moves to victory every single time we see him. Yes, there's multiple reasons, I suppose. But he is certainly a good player. And he does have a pretty good win record in the Corsair Cup, specifically. At Neeb is Neeb. And even though his best matchup is against PvP, PvZ ain't that far behind. It's the Terrans that He's... might give him trouble. I think for Neeb, the way I look at it too is he's really good at snowballing, no matter what the race is. Like, we don't see a lot of very even trades when it comes to the PvZ. I referenced the game actually, we were just, we kind of like day nine analyzed while I was streaming the other day. Him versus Scarlet on New Gettysburg, if you recall that weirdness. I ended up losing her Queen Ravager combo. But the point of it is, like, Neeb is not somebody who is infallible. Like, he, he definitely has weaknesses and he's lost to stupid things in the past. That's true, yeah. He's fixed a lot of his, I guess, because when I look at him, I would say that he snowballs mentally in, like, the wrong direction. Uh, he certainly seems to have fixed that. And then otherwise, I would really call him just a very solid player. Every single time you think a unit's going to die, he ends up saving it. Every single time that you think he's going to be broken, he ends up saving it. Um, he's just a very impressive guy all around. And certainly Absolutely. his micro is something that is always highlighted. And maybe, you know, we're giving him like more credit than we would like a Korean is the exact same thing. I don't know, but I think that it's impressive either way. So we do have a couple more gateways than just the standard four or three. Oh, I thought he had four. My bad. What's back there then? Oh, this was no. Oh, it just doesn't finish building. Okay, I know how to count. Shut up. Building so it is four. <laughs> it is four gateways. I mean, it's one more than you really need on a regular map, not that oh, station, which was picked uh, for them, by the way, as the Corsair Cup usually does. Run home, little lings. You gotta save his bots, or I mean, his units. This is an Egon Stepman. I was like, what are you talking about? He's got bots? No, that's Whoa! Just, that's just gonna be a tap out. Damn. Oh, man. I haven't Guru. seen a tap like that, that since, like, Idra. <laughs> well, here's the thing, though. I mean, I, I kind of, it was kind of justified for Guru. Like, he had been completely on the 
100% wrong part of the map with his only army units to fight with. You get something like a depths of all things into your mineral lines, and it's somebody like Neeb on top of that. Feels bad, man. But that's Dawson Station in a nutshell. Sometimes the games can be short and sweet, and sometimes they're long and weird. But this is uh, going to be Guru's map pick now. So he does get loser's choice going into the next game. Yeah, trying to get that information from him right now. A little, little quiet, though. I'm thinking long and hard. A lot of players... Um... They do that. You're, you've literally been so many Corsair Cups. I've hosted so many lobbies for you. We always make it with the mud. Anyway, uh, a lot of players <laughs> really are very, very, very upset with the fact that Das on stage can be chosen for them in this tournament. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, <clears throat> like, unless it's, like, literally round one chosen, which they don't mind as much because usually facing people that they believe they're going to beat. Um, as far as, like, round three, you know, round three, four, the semifinals, finals, they really hate when Das on Station is chosen. For Guru to go up against Neeb in round two is unfortunate. He is one of the, of course, the best players in the bracket right here. And to be forced in that first map, I don't think, started off very well. Like, there really are only a couple players that like that, that map. Bly and Euthermal, I think, likes it too. Terrans are okay with it in general, I suppose, but only a couple Zerg players are. Well, let's get into Apotheosis. Also, just got a very interesting email about the Dutch StarCraft League. Uh, for those who don't know, we'll be streaming some of their group stages coming up later this month. And uh, hopefully we'll have some more information about that by end of day. But it's got the dates and everything set up and confirmed, which is awesome. Cool. Also, we got some cool stuff to talk about uh, for our mods and other things we got coming up in the near future. But I uh, got a couple of sub shoutouts to get to. There's Kikakikikai. <laughs> I think I'm saying that right for the six month re seven. Zydox79 for the three months. Thank you guys both for supporting the channel. Spawn here in the bottom right, we got the Polish Zerg. It's going to be the green true esports guru. The top left, as the blue Protoss, he is Neeb. Why did they make a race purposely be supply blocked for like eight seconds in order to execute? their build opener why did they do that everyone else has a nice smooth transition into their overlord or their supply depot but poor protoss they gotta wait a little bit doesn't make any sense happened in brood war 2 i'm pretty sure that musing aside, Apotheosis was Guru's map choice. It seems to be a fairly comfortable map choice for Zerks. It's usually a lot more effective against Terran. Honestly, in this matchup, EVP, I really have never been like, well, the reason the Protoss lost that was because their push wasn't coming fast enough. Because usually by the time they're really pushing and being aggressive, most of their, um, I guess, uh, aggression, their their snowball effect come, comes off the back of a warp prism, which is, you know, obviously highly mobile. Uh, so next I have that, that problem that Terran does. But... I mean I love the warp prism for a lot of different reasons. Like obviously you've got mobility through it, the mm -hmm. warp ins are good. But all ins are just sexy when some people pull them off. But when you give somebody like Neeb a warp prism and he just starts doing the pickup drop shit he does, and he does it so damn well, it's like a completely different unit. It's no longer just a warp prism. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, it's, it, as I was saying, like the map, it can still play a part. Like if Neeb is going to try and send those seven adepts forward, then they're not going to be able really to retreat that easily. Like there's a lot of chances, a lot of time for Guru to choose to go for a surround on them, for instance. And there's also, I mean, the dynamic of the map is not just that it's, you know, long, like it's tall and it's skinny. It's also that there's uh, quite a few chokes, which actually would probably favor um, Neeb, especially if he does incorporate sentries, which most products, you know, have some at least. Not nearly as dependent as it was in Heart of the Swarm, but some. But we gotta talk about Guru's Evolution Chamber. He does get that fairly quickly. While he might still just get plus one from it, it's also so quick I would be surprised if he never did any Overlord drops. Right, that's one of the nice things about this map too. The way you get to scout, typically you'll have an, at least one of your Overlords in position to be that elevator, and that seems to be exactly what he's setting up with this one. So Neeb is going to have to get eyes on this, as this is something that can topple even the best Protoss players if unscouted. Now these lings are kind of dragging the uh, stalker this direction. It's a little bit worrisome. Uh, yeah. 
He also maybe was hoping to bait it into the speedlings they were about to form. Oh, that would have this... been almost a free stalker. This is going to be interesting. Timing-wise, it's on Guru's favor, but if that pylon were to have completed, the overcharge could have been devastating. In fact, actually, pause, no Mothership Core made. Skipping that for the faster resonating glaives could really hurt Neve here. First blood. Yeah, the, uh... Not even could, it will. It, I mean, <laughs> at least he scouted a little bit early so he can mentally prepare, but yeah, he doesn't have quite enough units. There we go, now two Adepts and a Stalker will be able to take care of it. And this was a uh, map from harassment. Actually, oh. you might get, yeah, a couple more probes here. If you got 10 probes, that would be oh, I like, amazing. I like Eight locking the so links far. in. Yeah, this was actually a really good move out of Guru. Again, it caught Neve a little bit off guard. Is it devastating? Not necessarily, because all Guru really did with this was even up the army count. So not at all pulling ahead through this. And Neve's still going for Resonating Glaives. Still going through forward with these gateways. So I... I, I can't say that I think this opening went super well for Guru, but it hasn't failed, is the big difference. Hmm. There's the plus one. I, you know, Guru got the third base, so he could just send over his lower drone count to it and still have a pretty great economy. As well as, you know, he's starting to drone right now. But I think he knows what the build is, right? He knows that depths are on the way, as they typically are in this matchup, but of course, accompanied by the resonating glaives. And it's like a while to get over here, though. Um, not a while, like, lo not long enough for him to get a bailing nest finished up, as he did only just start that. But certainly enough for Guru to have made a round of drones, and then made another round of lings. I thought he was looking for a surround, but he's actually... Okay, maybe, mm, okay now he's looking for a surround. He's gonna change his mind, maybe? Or maybe he didn't realize how far the adept had already come? So now they have a little bit of position in the mineral line and the gas geysers. In fact, a really good one here. Only two of them attacking the hatchery means that you can wait a long time, though. Yeah, not exactly a lot of <laughs> necessity to get in there, but he's going to play it safe and transfer away. I like that he doesn't over-dedicate to this. Last game, he was able to get into Guru's mineral line because Guru was incredibly out of position, but that's not the case for this game, and I think that's why we see no risk taken for it. Now, Guru's moving towards Banelings. He's getting a lot of a lot of Zerglings with Banelings. He's going to have plus one, and ideally, yeah. this is something that can deal with Adepts. The problem is, we've seen Neeb split, and we've seen Neeb really not care about Banelings in the past, and that might be the case here, depending on how many Adepts end up being on the front lines. Yeah, I think the amount of Lings is actually a lot scarier than the Banelings, for sure. So many Protoss have gotten really good against splitting against Banelings, focus firing Banelings. And if you rely too heavily on them as a Zerg player, then you'll be overwhelmed even still. So it's important to notice that, like, there's also a lot of Lings. Regardless if they surround them so the Banelings can hit them, you know, they can't split, or if they just simply get a surround, they have the plus one as well that has finished up, and I think they'll just be super effective. Adneeb is adept to be on the front lines, but he also got a Dark Shrine. Yeah, it already finished up. So he's going to be looking for more harassment opportunities. Four DTs are being warped in. Not over there. That's that? actually for double archons. <laughs> yeah, I guess figuring that Guru has the sport crawlers ready and he'd be right. He saw at least the one of the gold base and I maybe just figured to be one of the main and the natural. You know, you may also just be contemplating doing this anyways. Again, the drop pickup micro out of Neeb is fantastic, but secondly, it's just he knows there's going to be a lot of links. He knows there's going to be Banlings, and Archons will be the splash damage. She wants to help deal with this. Banlings coming in, getting a pretty decent surround. Picks up some of the Adepts, trying to micro these way, but he's going to save the Archons. They pop off, trading out a lot of army supply here, and Neeb doesn't get away with too much afterwards. Guru actually just looks such a fantastic fight, and Neeb's left with sub-20 supply when it comes to the army. Yeah, that wasn't... The greatest? I mean, Guru, yeah, he had to make a oh, lot DTs? of lings, but I think Neeb was really hoping that he wasn't making any lings, that he was being a little too greedy. He wouldn't have such a big army. Okay, this is kind of interesting. DTs will be able to eventually kill these lings, but I don't think it'll be before they kill the base. That plus one weapon upgrade chewing through this Nexus really fast. Overcharge not going to happen. He does manually detonate the bane lings, but it's not going to be enough to kill the DTs. No. But killing that Nexus was pretty big. Guru's on four bases, and well, only on 45 drones. Of course, he has the gold base still, so his economy is looking perfectly fine. And that, that's going to give him time to get to the better drone counts for the future. I hadn't realized that Guru had gotten his lair yet. <laughs> that's that seems pretty late. So yeah, his that's... upgrades aren't going to advance anytime soon. Well, not only that, but it's good with bailing speed and, and more importantly, not being there. I was going to mention, as you brought up the income, though, I keep, I keep forgetting we're able to use our own graphs. Like, Blizzard, can we please get these implemented in the standard game? 
It's actually not been... I thought this would be a lot more one-sided after watching the way these fights have been going down, but it's actually been bouncing back and forth. They're pretty even in a lot of cases. Um, I could see that. Again, we're like, as Guru had the gold base, Neeb had typically like five to ten more probes. The time I looked, so... I would... Not so surprised. The yeah. War Prism can do some more damage, especially as the gold base starts clumping up. Yeah, he's doing everything he can to keep these Archons it. alive. He gets so low, though. Oh, the shields have no time to regen. Yeah. They're, they're seriously like one hit away from death when they don't have any shields. A uh, uh, lot, a lot of lings. They're still not it's... super well upgraded. In fact, plus one of the finish for Neeb here, but they don't actually... Wait, what is Neeb's army? Oh, well, it's, it's immortals, everywhere. which is I find really interesting, too, because this isn't an army of roaches. It's an army of a lot and a lot of lings. It's... He's expecting to get to the roach part, though. Like, you know, like, it was scary to lose the third base and for your attack not to have broken them. In fact, you were the one that was kind of broken. So I think he's expecting roaches eventually, which Guru will be getting to. But oh, right, like, initially centuries. it's all about the links. Sentries just got popped off by this band links. The immortals start going down, too. I mean, it's a, once again, not a bad trade for Guru in terms of, like, what each player is losing. Also, can you hear that in the background? It's so fucking loud. Uh, there's a slight wind sound. Okay, good. As long as it's not loud for you, because then they won't be loud for stream, because they are chopping a tree down next door, and oh my god. But okay, oh. you're going to hear me yelling, because I can't hear my own thoughts over this. <laughs> I was going to say really quick, though, the Immortals, I'm not sure I like the choice in terms of damage, but they were able to tank and soak, and that barrier ability, of course, makes the legs waste a lot of shots. Downside, though, as we saw, not really that much damage. But when Neeb finally gets up to having, like, 5-plus Archons, when he's got... 15 plus adepts. That army is going to be unbreakable. Guru's been able to get out of this because he gets at Neeb's army while it's tiny, while it's small, and he gets these surrounds on it with just mm -hmm. massive amounts of units. Unfortunately, as time has gone on, however, he's not been able to produce enough lings. There's not simply 200, 200 lings on the field to get that surround that he wants. Yeah. But as his lair finished up, he did start really skyrocketing ahead in the production tab. You finally have Bane Link speed, you have double upgrades on both attacks. And, of course, he went for Hydralisk as opposed to the Roach. He, I mean, he got a Roach Warren and then, I guess, decided not to use it. So it could have been Ling, Bane, Ling, Roach, Ravager. It's going to be Ling, Bane, Ling, Hydra. And maybe if the game goes on for a long time into Lurkers. Oh. Uh, but regardless, Neeb, I mean, he's so, going to have Archons. He might even get Storm when he realizes what, what the composition is. What is going on with his Mothership Core? Well, definitely wasn't rallied like this. That is, like, from a Nexus or anything. No, 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 because, right? yeah, it's been in play for a while. Yeah. So, like, I thought he was coming down here to recall something, but there's nothing to recall. There's no army to speak of, and this is just a vulnerable giveaway, which, by the way, would be wonderful to have at home for overcharges right now. Nee, what are you, what's going on with that Mothership like core, man? eventually he'll realize it. And well, he may be able to save it, but, yeah, it's going to have to recall. I love cannons helping to buy a little time. These gateways are not necessarily important for production, but they are important for simply being a wall-off to buy him time to respond. But while he responds up here... Bottom side compromise once again. Neeb, also well known for not over splitting his units, unfortunately has to split his units and doesn't have enough here on the south side. Archon goes down, but not before soaking up a lot of those bane legs. Legs go for the big surround on the backside, but here comes the cavalry. And I think Neeb's Archon should be able to clean this up. But the question is, will that be before the Nexus dies? And the answer no. is no. No, no. But he still has enough of an army, I think, with another Adept Warping or Stalker up a Warping, whatever he wants to do, to push the army back. And it's always like the question of, did Guru. The killing the Nexus, was it worth the army that Guru lost? I'd say so, because he also took out a chunk of Neeb's <laughs> army along with him. But Neeb has been playing this long, steady game. He does absolutely need a fourth base. But he's been, like, clinging on every single time. And while, you know, it's, he's only, like, 20 supply above when we last checked, like, two minutes ago on his third base. <laughs> His slow and steady game might still work out for him. Neeb uh, just finally recalled the Mothership Corps back home as well, nice. just worth noting. Nice. That would have actually been able to help a lot, I think. Um, there weren't like so many pylons at either base. I think there was like two, maybe three at either, but um, they usually can defend one base, right, against pure lings. And unfortunately, I think he was probably like, where the hell is it? Where the hell is it? But maybe assume that it had died without him noticing, and then he realized he could recall it. Uh, Mass Bane is going to be really difficult to deal with. The gateway Sim City that he had was very, very helpful. If you get up again, maybe you'll be able to hold on. But so his third base is still alive, but his fourth base had the gateways as well, and now it doesn't. Yeah, the four, the four. He's yeah. going to need four fields galore here. Oh, well, they're not bad. Man. They completely cut out half the army of nice. Guru, and that's no exaggeration. But the Hydra still has a range up on that high ground. 
I'm surprised that Guru didn't continue to roll in with the Bailings on the left side, but I guess he really did want the entire attack mm. collapsing together. Because I thought that Neve would need those other force fields to the left, but just uh, kind of disengages a couple of his army units, takes out a gateway. That's going to open up the path, of course, for later Ling floods, which now Neve has to be worried about. And Guru has been Ling flooding for a large part of the game, so that's certainly certainly something he's not uh, too surprised of. Lots of bailings on the front line. The force fields miss, but these bailings get wasted into the stalkers. Adepts, where are you? Well, I mean, it's really important that he didn't have that many adepts for the bailing rolling, right? Like, even though some of the stalkers got hit, they can take Oh, he's going to catch them. All the hydras. Oh, he's got to be very careful, but he realizes that there's another army coming from the other side. So who is the one that's really getting sandwiched here? There's two sandwiches going it's... on. Yeah, I, I think I'll take the Neeb sandwich every single day. Every single day. Yeah. Okay. Well, Guru did back off with the bottom side engagements, if you want to call it. So it did work out favorably for Neeb. Of course, Guru, his you know his army dynamic really does is hydralisk, and they gotta protect, be protected by something, and that can just be Ling's you know as fodder, just buying it's... hits, and they weren't there to protect the hydras. It does need to be stressed and emphasized over the course of this game, like seriously for the last twenty or fourteen minutes or whatever. Neve's been playing an army deficit every single time, and even you could argue that the type of supply he has isn't very good either. This surround is going to be pretty nasty to deal with, but once he breaks away from it, he can choose to walk away or push up that ramp and try and fight. Either way, once this. again, he's got that smaller army supply, and I don't like that he keeps trying to take these fights. Yeah, he's definitely after retreat with his Blink Stalkers, but he's using Blink to Micro instead, and this might just be all in for Neve. Oh, it is. Uh, I'm surprised he did that. His fourth base is actually up. His supply was only 20, 30 down, which uh, defensively could still worked out, or, or still could have worked out, but we'll estimated his position probably. I don't know. Uh, either way, that is going to lead to a game three, which, yay, we don't have a bunch of two O's going on today, so that's a good start. Um, but let's uh, let's hop into a small break. Also, if you can message Olivia and tell her to make sure, uh, I guess, hold... TLO's match because TLO and Alive are a rematch. We absolutely must cast that. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, small break, guys. Two minutes. We'll get a game three of Neeb versus Guru. We'll see you soon. All right, guys, we're back, but only for just a second as I try and fix my camera and we'll go into Game for Frost. I also need to grab a new can of air, so Uno Lamento. You just dusting the inside of your computer? Yeah. During a cast? Oh. Yeah, I know you're not supposed to do this while it's working, but I'm getting frame rate issues and I don't know what to do. I don't oh. want to pause just, the tournament by going offline for like half an hour. I just literally can't do it. Like, So I, once I really a month, I it. normally, like, I've got like a special set of tools, I vacuum it, I do all the things you're supposed to do to take care of your computer. Uh, but yeah. since my arm is broken, till now, I've just actually been really complacent about it. So I have to do a proper clean at some point. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. But I know, like, a lot of people have their computer, like, up on their desk with them or, like, off to the side where it's... The point is, like, easily uh, accessible to, like, plug in your USBs and, and take off the cover so you can clean it. And mine has never been like that. I always have to, like, get on all fours and, like, crawl around under there and then, like, push, <laughs> push the computer out. Ah, well, that's interesting. Yeah, I've got a side that easily detaches. Uh, Let's get in check the Corsair because I'm actually using Corsair case. It's just two. Oh, my side. Two switches. Easily detaches, but that. Oh, okay. I guess it's not that easy. Actually, I have to get a tool for it. Yeah. Mine's but... just literally a switch. I flip. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. We're back. Game number three. Things are tied up one to one here in the best of three for the Corsair Cup. So on the bottom right side of the map, we got the Green Zerg with cross spawns. It's Guru. In the top left, as the blue Protoss, he is Neeb. Now, there is something to be spoken about regarding Neeb here. As we have seen this happen all too many times in the past for StarCraft, you'll have somebody win a really awesome tournament. Example, Drogo wins DreamHack. Awesome. Best Protoss in the world at the time being. Feels like he's on Cloud9. Then loses in, like, round four of the Corsair Cup the following week. Like, it sucks because there is no way... Like, you just do not stay badass. You didn't somehow get some super awesome item that made you better than everyone else. Anybody and everybody can contest you at any given time. And seeing somebody like Neeb lose, okay, a little bit of the server issue to talk about, but more importantly, just noting that he is human. And that in StarCraft, things can vary quite heavily. Yeah, that's certainly true. I mean, some of that had to do, of course, because I do. I still remember the Drogo and the Hearthstone 
uh, what do you want to call it? Comeback? No. Um, participation in online cups post victory. That was a long way to say it. <laughs> and like both times, they had just gotten back from you know X or Y tournament because these are hosted on Mondays. And most tournaments actually have you coming back on a Monday, so it's surprised that uh, they can participate at all. But some of them do have like uh, Sundays. They go from Thursday to Saturday, or only Friday and Saturday, which is kind of weird, but whatever. Um, or they they just fly you back Sunday after like an early tournament, and it could be a uh, pain. But Neeb has been back in the states for almost a week. He's probably still a little bit groggy, I suppose, with the jet lag going on. I mean, 13 hours is no joke to get used to. The point is, uh, I think that these two just really m well match up against each other, even if uh, all these other things weren't considered, like their their mentality today or the, the lag on EU. I think that Guru just does well online cups, and Neeb does well in general. <laughs> and <laughs> That's things actually a really good way to describe even, that. Things even out to a really good match that should have gone to the ace match. Now, a lot of that last game that really threw Neeb off was the early lings, of course. They killed eight probes. If they kill four probes, I don't think it's nearly as bad, but double that, that's actually a real hiccup in your plan, especially when your plan is not just taking like a third base, it was actually to try and attack them on an already very long map. It's gonna delay your push by a couple of seconds. So I think that really was kind of like, it was not a snowball, like it didn't come from like one to a hundred really quickly, but it was something that like, threw Neeb's plan off a little bit, and then it kind of tumbled from there. He couldn't quite secure his third base, he couldn't quite secure his fourth base. Although I want to say, like, Neeb was bringing it back. He's only 20 armor supply yeah. down, which is okay for <clears> the <throat> boss, and then he just, I think, overcommitted to an attack. Yeah, I think if you'd actually just stayed turtle up around that fourth, he would have been better off for it, but at the same time, I understand his thought process of, like, I'm sick of defending, I gotta attack. I think, yeah. for me, too, like, watching Neeb, okay, it's hard to really criticize anything this guy does a lot of the time, but truthfully, I think... He had that warp prism alive for so long. We never really saw him use it for harassment. It just kind of floated around after the archons uh, got shut down in the early game. Would have loved to see something happen with that. But anyways, this game around gets in here with some adepts, not really getting a lot of kills, but trading out for a lot of lings. Uh, same idea of an attack here. It did have resonating glaives, and it's a pretty common attack. So Guru is taking a damage from it. That's so really on him. But he cleans it up as nicely as possible. Of course, he sacrificed drones for like a little bit to build all those lings, but. And you can get back into droning. He actually made like 20 more lings, which I don't think is going to be able to tear down the third base. Maybe a plus one is also finished, but it's not. So I think that's going to be enough adepts plus an overcharge to take care of things. And Guru is just going to retreat. Mm, he could try and catch these out in the open. I, this is kind of a little bit dangerous by Neeb, you know, to constantly... If you're literally, like, throwing away eight adepts at a time, then you don't have an army to stop a counterattack. But if they're actually working, like, if they're killing the lings as they die, or they're getting, uh, they're getting oh, a lot of lings. drones... Just split, he knows okay. you gotta split, too. The problem is when you split, you open yourself Pretty up to split. lings, but there might be just enough adepts to make this not an issue. In fact, he knows it's not, this so he is... cancels and decides to go through with the fight. This is a very good trade of Adepts, and it was really unfortunate for Guru because it hit just before a plus one was done. I think a plus one was done, those last like six Adepts or whatever that had just a tiny bit of health would have all actually died. So that was pretty good. And like I'm saying, like it's very scary because now Ni barely has any army back at home, but he did trade out pretty effectively with the Ling, so it's not like Guru has an overwhelming army supply. He just has uh, a few scary units, you know, plus one Lings take him seriously and whatnot, but... Overcharges will definitely take care of that, and the game continues on. Guru gets a fourth base, Neeb saturates his third. Uh, he's going to be going for charge this time, as opposed to blink, which is interesting. Um, I mean, the blink last game, it really did feel like it was the right decision when you saw how effectively he dealt with the Banelings, but he did have some trouble with the Hydralisk. The one really good fight happened when he ended up sandwiching this Hydralisk, which, you know, always is going to go very well if they're alone. But with the charge lots, you got to be careful against the Banelings, which Guru might not be investing into, actually. He's not getting such difficult hooks this game. Well, if there's not Banelings, then charge lots probably are a really good idea. Even if there are Banelings, charge lots can still be a good idea, but you have to control them well. 
you know, let the Archons soak it up or the Immortals soak or yeah. just keep them in back lines and everything's over and done with, the Banelings. Oh, Guru, why did you put these very important this buildings Sin City. here? It's not just the important buildings at third base, it's also like the Sim City. If right? Neve were to come the from fuck? the right side... I mean, maybe he realizes too. If he doesn't come from the right side, you just helped his force field so no, I just I look at this even more. Like, there's that aspect of it too, but the adepts could just transfer like anywhere between these cracks and be oh, so yeah, good yeah. to go. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, it's it's a little bit odd. Um I think that like I don't know. I get this feeling when I play Zerg and I start to like cramp myself in in corners with buildings, I'm like, okay, they're definitely gonna use force fields against me, I'm gonna die. But maybe he just uh, was in a hurry, right? And he just he just slams him down. So a couple things to go over while we're waiting, while the Archons merge in and all this. Uh, the income graph, for those who don't know how to read this real quick, it's a differential graph, so it's not like Neeb was getting 740 minerals per minute, but he's getting 740 more minerals per minute than Guru type thing. And it's a pretty big Neeb game when it comes to the income. Also, on units lost prior to this, I didn't realize, like, I know the Adepts were trading out well, but it was 15 Adepts for 75 Lings. That's some pretty nice value. Yeah, that's... That's better for the adepts, isn't oh, it? Get her I don't want to math on stream. I don't want to math. <laughs> anyway, this is a fairly sizable attack. You know, it does commonly occur, I would say, around 8 minutes, like 8.30 here. It's cross position frost, of course, as well, which is always something that's going to have to be a little bit more, like, thoughtfully pushed out, I guess. You know, if it's if they're both on the left side, right, vertical spawns, then you can just kind of fall back to the choke and then use the same city, like I was talking about, like they're both on the right side. But through the middle of the map, you, like, you have to be super worried they're going to find you and get a concave around. But Guru, I feel like he forgot his centrifugal hooks. Like, if you're going to play with banelings, which most Zerg styles do nowadays, you, you, you want the centrifugal hooks for the actual attack. Sometimes it doesn't matter. Sometimes they mess up the force fields, they mess up their control, and they still get the hits, but... It's a little scary to see him not rolling, just waddling. So I'm wondering if I have too many friends on my friends list. Huh, maybe. Can you observe with the starter edition of StarCraft? He has your custom games? Yeah. There's two things you can't do with the starter edition. One is play ladder. Let's you know, after this game, and after this two, series, I'm gonna log weird. over and we'll see if we can to Wildfire and see if that works. Okay. Because I feel like I'm I'm sure this is a total amount of just like placebo effect, but it just feels like my frame rate's been so bad lately. Well, what is it? Uh, I'm to remember what the command is. It's like barely 30 right now. It feels bad, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, granted, there's like a hundred links on the map, but it's it's been suffering. So we'll test. We'll do science afterwards, guys. See if that improves the quality of the stream. Because for those who don't know, it was recently pretty much confirmed that the amount of friends you have uh, is kind of proportion to how many frames you lose. Yeah, it would be odd for it just to affect you now. Well, so it's, many it's, two it's only really been the last two weeks I've been noticing the, the performance issues, and it was like, oh. what, about two weeks ago when TLM made that tweet? So again, I don't know if it's a placebo effect or real. We'll do science afterwards to try and confirm. Uh, regardless, though, Neve has so many freaking Archons, ten of them in play. There's a lot of Hydras, and the Hydras can actually take a sizable fight versus the Archons, but these Archons aren't here for the Hydras. They're here for the Lings. They're here for the Banelings. They're here to soak them all and kill everything they can before dying. The Charge yeah. Lots, ah, they're going to be so good versus the Hydras if they can live through the Banelings. That's a pretty big if. Warp Prism to I mean, the south. Some Zealots going to distract down here as well. This might allow Neve to get positioning. Uh, he's not really going for it. There, he's going to go for it now. He still has a bit of creep to, to, to clean up, too. Can't be really that afraid of the Bane Links with so many Archons and Immortals, but the Archons, uh, they're going to have to live to actually help deal with Ooh. the Links as well. He kites back, but unfortunately his stutter step was, I don't know, messed up, so he loses a lot of attack damage through this. Neve's army's yeah. still not completely out of the game yet, but these Archons are all really low in well. shots from being killed. Big warp into the main with Zealots, however, is why there's no reinforcements ready to go. Not a lot to kill up here, but it gets the spawning pool. No more links for Guru. No more Bane links for Guru. Yeah, it gets the hatchery, and that, that still had a bit to mine out, so... He's still on four bases. It's just going to be difficult to get his drones over to the left fourth base, because, well, it's over the Zonaga, Neeb's army has been sitting there for most of the game. Or most of the last four minutes, rather. It's retreating now, and he will bother remaking that hatchery, but... 
it's still, I would say, a better army than what Guru has. Even if Guru gets up to Lurkers, I think that Neeb is already, I mean, he's already got his upgrades at plus three. Guru not bad as 2 one, one but still, Protoss is on plus three. Getting up to Storm, starting his shield upgrades, which is a pretty cool addition. And it does have so many Archons. Just Archon Immortal just seems to be better as the game goes on, you know? Like, there's a point where the Zerg player has to give up the lair-based tech or, you know, hold on with it, basically, but then try and accelerate towards Hive and Broodlords. Guru does kind of have this reputation of being able to brute force with said lair-based tech, and that probably was going to try and do here. But I have a lot of faith in Neeb taking care of, of someone who overdedicates the Lurkers. Oh, and Neeb's already on his way to Tempest, so the Broodlord transition is now way too late. <laughs> Well, so the Tempest I thought were really interesting. I'm, I was a lot more focused on the storm he was finally completing just now as we speak. AoE versus Lings and Hydras is going to be necessary no matter what the follow-up is, like whether there's Broodlords or Ultras or even Lurkers or anything behind this. Neve needs a way to wash off those Lings, maybe hit the Hydras then in the back line. So I really like the storm more than the Tempest, but you're right, like, no chance for Broodlord transition, no chance for anything really if those Tempests are already in play. Yeah. That's a little scary. I mean, there is certainly something to be said about catching Neve while he's transitioning to Tempest, simply overwhelming his ground army and then Tempest by themselves and being able to hold up enough. But I don't know if that's ever going to happen. Guru would have to be, first of all, m more aggressive than he is. He just cleans up his fourth base. And then there's going to be Storm to deal with, and his Lurkers aren't even ready with his army. And I think that Neve has got him kind of caught on every single angle. I can't see Guru getting something done here unless he has a massive Ling run by. Yeah. Uh, charge slots. Anything they connect here, they're just going to swipe and kill. Plus three weapon upgrades. No problem tearing through any of this. Tempest out are actually a little bit awkward. I'm not sure how they'll fare. They, they can certainly be the force that breaks the lurkers, but so can the immortals. So there's a lot of, like, I don't know, redundancies, I guess, through that. But uh, okay. Zealots kill a hatchery down here to the south. Not a problem. Ling's going to try and clean them up. There's another base to kill. Drones also died, 19 of them in total. Yeah. Uh, Revelation. Say a little bit. Um, there aren't really that many immortals, so it's not like he can concave on the lurkers and just easy peasy wreck them. So he does have to depend a little bit on the Tempest. There's Plus, they're like seriously free damage now. Yeah, I mean, there's no necessity to do that, too. He's got the Revelations going down, he's just chipping away from far, far away. There's no reason to move into this unless he really feels pressure to end the game. I mean, Neve is pretty much maxed out, and that's great. But there's no reason for him to push into this army when he can just chip away at it like this. Yeah. And anytime that Guru tries to engage on top of the Tempest, like he catches them a little bit too far forward, Neeb can back those Tempests up with Storms. As well as, you know, any other part of his army he wants to dedicate to. Yeah. His upgrades are continuing to have plus two shields, plus two air attack as well. And Guru really is, I feel, just stuck. He would have to get an amazing attack where the Bane Lanes kill the High Templars, the Hydras get a concave and kill the Archons, and then he can run under the Tempest with said Hydras. I mean, certainly Neeb has set himself up here attacking like he is to a huge concave, but that, you know, his Storms would actually have to be not available, I feel, for the concave to work. And there's no EMP from a Zerg player. Oh, Guru's feeling baited into the fight. The Archon soaks all the Bailings, so the other storms can be dedicated onto the Lurkers! Oh my god, clumped up really badly. Ling's gonna try and flood in, it's just not gonna work, and Guru's army is getting annihilated. Not even a close fight. Yeah. I mean, that concave really helps, as you can see, but there's GG. so many storms. GG. Lol Homps, even a 7 month reset at the end of the game, says so shout out to Tom from MySpace. What? All right, guys, we are going to be trying to get into TLO and uh, and Alive. Hopefully, they haven't started. Uh, TLO versus Alive. You guys here. We're going to go to a small commercial break. But while we do that, do me a kindness, guys. Do me a favor. If you really want to help us out, scroll down a little bit into the info section here on Twitch. Click those Corsair links. Let them know that you came from the channel by using those links. And if you ever plan to buy any Corsair gear, same deal. Buy it through the links. That way, they know you came from us. But a small commercial break, and we'll see you in two minutes. 